morning, everyone. Welcome to the TMT Morning Call video for Tuesday, January 21st. Very quiet day in the markets on Friday. Actually, believe it or not, the week was actually relatively quiet aside from the two up days we had in that one down day. Uh, a lot of stocks are just not really uh, moving. If anything, a lot of the high beta names are really taking a, a beating right now. And that's sort of not a good sign. But we're going to do a top-down analysis um, in this video. Dow Jones up 41, NASDAQ down 21, S&P down 7 bucks, and then and Russell uh, down almost $5. Now, um, so, so we just got options expiration out of the way, and sometimes it's a lot of the options X shenanigans that go on. Um, so now we really want to know what price action happens, right? So we were closed today, but the worldwide markets were open. Uh, we actually closed flat on the futures, and we actually closed up a little bit in uh, gold and silver. And I'm going to discuss that in depth because I've gotten a lot of emails um, asking about the gold and silver and why and this and that. But I want to, so I want to kind of go through that with you. But in the meantime, I got some indicators that I want to show you, and um, I. Big news out tonight in the um, in the early Asian session that people People's Bank of China just did a massive reverse repo, which basically is injecting tons of money into the market, devaluing the yen. So what does that mean? Well, the lower yen is in favor of risk on. So that means higher stock prices, and that's uh, right now. That's the relationship that everybody's watching, and that's why you need to know. Even though you're not a trader of the yen, neither am I, but we need to know what the yen is doing at this point in time uh, because everyone else, the big players, are following it. So as I'm recording it, the yen is down and the equity futures are up five handles. So um, pretty interesting stuff. And that's just going to kind of give me the cue of my analysis of what I'm anticipating. Again, not that it's going to happen but what I am anticipating in the coming days. Okay, so let's get right into it because we have a lot of stuff to cover tonight and I don't want to make this too long and too stretch for you guys. Um, I know, it, you know, who wants to sit in front of a screen for 16, 18 minutes? So trying to make it as brief as possible with covering the key points here. Bullish percent SPX. As you can see, this continues to roll over. Uh, even though we had a little bit... Um, a little bit of an up day on Friday on the Dow. Obviously, this is the SPX, so we were down lower. And as you can see here, we're starting to separate from the moving average. So this is a good sign that tells me I think we see lower prices, okay? Now, remember, anything could change. So just keep that in mind. Don't go out and just blindly short the market or even just buy the market up here. Anything could change. So what I'm seeing here in my analysis is that we are starting to trend lower. Now, take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, the weekly summation index. As you can see, we are still up, but we're starting to get that little bit of a hook here. Remember, this is like turning a big, big boat. So this is going to take some time. So right now, we're still on a buy signal. But if you can see, we're just kind of, see how that curves? We have one or two down days. The thing will just immediately go whoop and go lower. So that's what I'm watching. Still, again, just kind of keeping abreast of what's happening. The NASDAQ summation index is actually now actually really turning a little bit to the downside. So very reliable indicator, um, and this is something I'll be watching in the coming days and weeks. So watch what we uh, what we get on the uh, on the NASDAQ. Now, um, furthermore, I'd like to show you a couple of things that is interesting to me, but let's just get through the indexes first for the um, S&P 500. Uh, excuse me, uh, stock, S&P 500 stocks above the 50-day moving average. Now, we have this huge uh, symmetrical triangle, but as you can see here, we have now turned lower yet again. And so energy is building. As you can see, we have these wide price action, and then we start to curl in and really get tight into the apex of this triangle. So let's watch for clues. Me, personally, every time we get up into the 70 to 80 percentile, we break lower. So this is something that I'm watching again uh, further evidence that we may sell off in the coming days and weeks, okay? Now, um, let's take a look at the tick. Tick above zero, but as you can see here, really not getting any momentum to the upside. Uh, when we, when you, ha you, you look at this and you say, look at this, higher highs, higher lows. This is actually reverting back to the downside, lower lows and lower highs. Barely keeping above zero. Again, not a good sign, but something that we're going to watch. McClellan Oscillator um, really hasn't done much uh, to the... the pretty much the last six, seven months, uh, just really hanging around zero here. But again, this tells me that price can move a lot further to the downside or 
a lot further to the upside, okay? So that's really what it's telling me. You can see here the Bollinger Bands are starting to kind of pinch a little bit, creating a little bit of energy here. So it's something, again, to keep an eye on. And I go through this uh, religiously every night when we doing when I'm doing homework and doing my uh, analysis in the markets because the more you look and the more you re you re uh, you recognize patterns the better off you're going to be as a technical analyst and as of course trader all right so now here's what I'm looking at and this is what um, I'm not too too um, excited about as we know when there's risk on you know we buy the high high beta names and the tech stocks and the banks and this and that but when we have a risk off mentality you know, they basically sell everything and they revert to the dollar, bonds, consumer discretion, excuse me, consumer staples, and of course, utilities and healthcare, right? So if you just looked at what I just told you, you could see um, what I'm going to show you, actually, TLT. As you can see here, um, we are at the 20-day highs, but, but what's happening is that we've double bottomed, right, in bonds, and bonds are moving up now. Now, I think it's going to be short-lived. Uh, I think bonds eventually will sell off again, but here's the 200-day moving average, and it's only two points away. So I would suggest that this continues to rise, catch a 200, and then start to sell off. What that would do, it, it would put pressure on U.S. equities, because why? Money's coming out of equities and rolling into safe haven, right, such as bonds. Let's take a look at the U.S. dollar. U.S. dollar, same thing. Safe, the U.S. dollar is definitely a safe haven currency, probably the best safe haven currency alongside of the Japanese yen. Don't ask me why they, they call it uh, the yen is a safe haven. I, I, it still puzzles me, but um, um, it is a safe haven currency. Swiss franc was, but now it's pegged to the euro. So that alone, you set that aside, you only have the two left. And what's happening is that's where you get that inversely correlated um, relationship between equities and of course the dollar and of course the yen so now if you see this here starting to revert back if we break above this 200 day moving average 8158 which would take this this little resistance area out I, I think you see further upside and then what that would happen would put pressure on equities and commodities now certain commodities now we don't know as of right now yes it would put pressure on uh, gold and silver but seasonality gold and silver are coming into some seasonal strength right now uh, and I think that uh, gold and silver is a great buying opportunity on any weakness. Speaking of that, let's go into uh, the gold and silver trade. But I wanted to show you a couple more things real quick. XLU, utilities, right? High, di high uh, yielding dividend plays, utility stocks, utility sector is the ETF. As you can see here, reverting back up nice. If you can see, you can even see a head and shoulder, inverted head and shoulders, head, left shoulder right shoulder and the neckline comes right across where we are right now if we start to break up higher money will start flowing back into utilities okay same thing now let's take a look at consumer discretionary versus consumer staples so when you do a ratio chart like this and I do this the consumer discretionary versus the consumer staples what happens is as you can see here clearly the relationship consumer discretionary up S&P 500 up when we have consumer discretionary start to falter, what, look what happens. And that's what's happening. We have, we have retail stocks really taken on the chin this past week. So if the retail stocks cannot recuperate and start to really catch up, and we start really breaking this trend line here in this ratio chart that I'm just showing you, I think you will definitely see some further downside in the in U.S. equities. Uh, and we haven't even started yet. And I'll show you that in the index chart in a couple of minutes. But again, another chart to just get an idea. Not so much day trading, but I want to just show you of what we're looking at. Okay. Now, speaking of the yen and the S&P, I just want to show you their relationship. We have an inversely correlated relationship with, with the Japanese yen, FXY ETF versus the SPX, cash. As you can see, we're going down. SPS cash going up. Now we're starting to pop higher and we're starting to roll here. So if you're not watching the yen during the day, I suggest you do so. If you don't have the futures contract, you can use the FXY uh, pretty much one for one with the uh, with the future contract. Okay. All right. So now, what what does that do to our gold and oil trade? Well, uh, gold, oil, commodities, soft commodities, hard commodities, um, really uh, pretty much across the board, any commodity. Well. I like the gold and silver trade. And I, I still like it uh, in the in the short term. January, February, we come to some seasonality strength here. So, 
Therefore, let's take a look. Let's take a top-down approach. Let's look at gold monthly. The gold chart is in a bear in a bear market. No question about it. We had the eight and twenty cross, as you can see, back in 02. We've held that all the way back up until we broke down in 2000, early 2013. We are now in a bear market. That does not mean that gold can have a rip your face off counter trend trade or a rally, right? And that usually what happens with gold. Okay, I'm not saying that gold is going back to the all-time highs. What I'm saying is we can easily see $50, $60 in two to three days, four days, maybe even a week to see gold retrace. And that's what we're looking for for that retracement rally. It's actually very violent to the upside, and it just stops out a ton of shorts. So this is what I'm looking for. Now, that's the gold monthly. Take a look at the gold weekly. And again, we're down here at these lows. It's really a double bottom. I don't show the, the, the data here. But if we can get back above that 20 day then I think you're gonna see at least 13 1300 1320 somewhere in that area maybe even more depending on how many um, funds and people are short gold okay so um, just again just to get an idea of what it looks like now look at the gold daily chart we broke this bearish symmetry lower lows and lower highs and now we have um, the bull flag we broke up bull flag broke back up again Okay, now, so remember, when you have uh, People Bank of China, for example, devaluing the yen, we have risk on. And our futures are up in the overnight session right now, and gold and silver are basically flat doing nothing because we have a risk on trade going on. So this is exactly what I'm looking for. Um, but when this does happen, when the equity markets start to roll, they're going to come for gold, they're going to come for the dollar, they're going to come for consumer staples, and they're going to come for the yen right those are the four that you want to watch and if they're all correlated and everybody's running for these four safe haven uh, currencies and sectors then you know you have a risk off effect going on here in equities and that's when you want to really start to tighten up stops uh, selling your uh, taking profits what have you or hedging your bet okay so now let's go into uh, palladium as you can see here, here's our silent leader doing fantastic, holding up here. Even if it fell back to the 50, you got a ton of support. 20, 200, and a 50-day moving average right around the 730 area. So this to me tells me that we got plenty of support. And this here, once we see Palladium take off this 750 area, this little uh, um, a short-term um, base at these le levels, then I think you're going to see gold and silver travel up to the upside as well. Okay. So now let's take a look at silver. I want to show you silver. Silver doing fantastic. I like silver better. Silver does well between January and February. A little bit better than gold. Uh, but if you see this little area here that we have, we have this little um, uh, we have this little triangle here. This is something that um, that that you want to see on the on the breakout. Once we break this out, then uh, you can easily see 2150 in um, in uh, in silver. All right. So let's go into the index charts right now. Let's go into the index charts. Um, here is the ES. Now, right now, we have we have the ES up 775. And we had this little uh, consolidation area here of Thursday, Friday. And we had Sunday. We just literally just now starting to break back out again. And then Monday, of course, we did nothing on Monday. And now we're taking out this consolidation area here. Now, to me, I think... Uh, what I think will happen, my target is 1857. And what I think will happen is that, it will, that remember, the equity markets, the markets are made to fool the masses. And I think that when you have this consolidation area for several days, right, people trying to get short, people trying to get long, getting stopped out. And this is where I say patience is needed in this market. You know, just take a step back and wait because there's going to be tons of opportunity to make a ton of money in this market. Now, when this market, as the ES is starting to go, the markets get everybody long again. And then once we break back up, and I'd love to see it, if it holds right now, a big gap up on Monday, and then let's see a revert, uh, revision to the mean of some sort of a big fade and close negative on the day, I think you're going to have um, a, a start of a, of a possible tradable top. Okay. Now remember, this is just my opinion. It means absolutely nothing in trading, but this is what I am anticipating to do. If that does happen, uh, I will be very aggressive to the downside. Now remember, we can continue to go higher, take out 1857, and we can see the 1618 at 1870. <laughs> That's totally possible. So let's 
get proof and evidence that price is rolling over and starting to break down okay now I'm gonna go through these charts real quick you're not gonna not much really to talk about as you can see the monthly chart here we're still at these bigger extensions and again it could stay that way for another month or two before it starts to sell off again and even if we were to get back down to um, you know 1730 even at 1500 we would still be in a monthly uptrend that's how crazy this market is okay so now spiders inside day if we do gap up we're going to gap up to the upper end of the range here and that's where i think um that you're going to have markets actually start to um uh, really start to run up and then we would start to reevaluate what is the next um ex next phase of this of this rally remember 1857 in the es is going to be the target okay um, let's take a look at the diamonds. Same thing with the diamonds. We just pause in above the 20. Again, a gap up tomorrow will put us at the upper end of this range. And if we could take this out, then I think you'll see some higher prices at least for another day or so. Watch the Bollinger Bands. You see that's tightening, so energy is building here. Okay. Same thing with the uh, transportation sector, holding re relatively well. All of the sectors that we follow are above the 20 day and holding the upper end of the range. Just wanted to just quickly go through this to show you IWM and Russell, same thing. And, of course, the Q's. Uh, Q's holding up relatively well. But, again, higher beta names are getting, are getting a, 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 are actually getting sold into. So, remember, a word of caution. That, to me, is a sign that something uh, of the uh, market dynamics are changing here. Okay? GLD. Now, we get above this 50-day moving average, and we get above 12175. Uh, we do have some resistance up here, as you can see, we're right in this area, 124, 125. But I think you're going to get a good shot to the upside if GLD starts to really take off here. Here is XLE. Again, just showing you the uh, energy names holding up relatively well in this bearish rising wedge. Um, we have oil. Right now, no trade in USO or WTI crude. Uh, needs a lot of work to base here because I think crude can actually sell off one more time to the 3080, 35, 31.85 area of the USL. XHB coming off now, as you can see here, and that's fine. I mean, we had a nice big move up. I'm looking for um, definitely higher prices here in the short term. So what we want to do now is let's see if we get this little price channel. We get out of this little downtrend channel here. And then we pop higher. Once we pop higher, get above the 20, I'm going to look to start nibbling. And maybe even when we get a little bit lower, start nibbling a little bit lower as well. Now, um, as you can see, Lennar held up relatively well. And we have Pulte Homes, PHM, doing well, relatively well. The builders are doing fine. There's nothing wrong with them at all. KBH here, just basing again on the 200-day moving average. Watch this. It might need a little more work, but once we start taking out 1850, uh, I think you're going to see so quick, quick price uh, movement up to the twenty twenty one dollar area. XLF, the banks, as you can see, taking it on the chin a little bit, still above the twenty day moving average. You see, Citibank reported earnings now testing this upper end of this uh, uh, symmetrical triangle. Let's see if this can hold. If it can hold and start to take out Friday's high, I think that's a great, great area to start um, legging into a trade. Even if it to break down, long as it holds above the 50, easy to manage, absolutely. JP Morgan here, I think it needs a little bit more work to the downside before I start nibbling long on JP Morgan. Goldman Sachs as well, I like to see Goldman come in around 171. But again, banks and the builders are going to be the theme going into um, 2014. Apple really took it on the chin. Again, guys, uh, you know... If you're going to trade it, to trade it, that's one thing. But if you're going to look to build a position and hold it, this is definitely not the spot. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. I know it's a long video. I apologize, but I wanted to get my point out. It's going to be a very interesting week. It's going to be a great interest. It's actually going to be a very interesting day tomorrow, especially with the uh, People Bank of China really pumping a ton of liquidity into the market and devaluing that yen. Futures are big tonight. Let's see if it can hold going into the morning session. Um, and if that does, it's playing right into my assumption of what I think may be happening. A big gap up, maybe hold for a day or two, and then fade. And if that's the case, then we're going to be looking for the next rally to look to get short. And, of course, I will keep you posted. Have a great night, and we will speak to you tomorrow. Take care.